Good morning, church. How's everybody doing this morning? Why don't we stand on our feet and prepare to worship the King. He deserves all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome those who are joining us online. Uh, if you're in the area, we say come and see us in person. Uh, you never know when we're going to give everybody $100. You might miss out. <laughs> praise the Lord. So, But more importantly, set this time aside and let's prepare our hearts for service. Amen. To hear from God today, to worship Him. Does He deserve praise and honor? He does. All glory, all honor belong to Him. Everything that we have, everything that we can do is a gift from Him. And, uh, and He deserves the glory. So, Father, we worship You this morning. We honor You. We say You be magnified. Father, be lifted up. People be drawn to You, see You, know You, and know Your love, Father, which causes people to change their ways. Be glorified in our midst today, in Jesus' name. Here's a song, a good confession. Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man, woman, person. They are ordered of God. So we're going to declare that this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered of God. In the time, in the time of trouble, God will uphold him. God will preserve him. My God will sustain him in the time. declare that again. Rejoice for the steps. Put a smile on your face of a righteous man. They are ordered of God. They are ordered of God. Thank you, Lord. Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered of God. Thank you. In the time of trouble, in the time In the time of trouble, God will uphold him. My God will preserve him. Our God will sustain him. In the time of trouble, God will lift him up. So rejoice for your steps are order of God. So rejoice for your steps are order Glory to God. That's a good confession. Aren't you glad? Do you believe that today? Say, I'm always in the right place at the right time. Glory to God because your steps are ordered of him. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Man, it's a little warm up here. Whew. No longer slaves. Amen. Glory to God. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. We're not slaves. You know, in Ephesians or Colossians chapter 1, it talks about, in about the ninth verse around there, how we've been rescued from the powers of darkness and translated into the kingdom of light. Amen. We are no longer. And you know what that what does that mean for us though? What does that that means that when the trespasser tries coming with something, we got to tell him, we we're not we're not under your rule any longer. You have no right, no access. We've been we're we're part of the family of God. Amen. So, hallelujah. Let's sing this out. You unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. 
to me till all my fears are gone. Sing it out. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. We've been delivered. We've been set free. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. sunsets free is free indeed glory hallelujah thanks be unto god thank you lord jesus we magnify you in this place hallelujah glory to god the lord is good amen he is faithful he is worthy to be praised working God, a God of miracles, God of prosperity, we honor you in this place. We honor you in our lives and all that we do. May we 
give you glory in all that we do, all that we say, in our being. worship him.
that he's making a way say that he's making a way he's making a way he's always making a way he's making a way thank you father we believe we receive we believe we receive thank you father we believe you with our hearts thank you lord you're making a way things are happening glory to god we're full of excitement full of faith full of expectation thank you lord jesus thank you father hallelujah bless the name of the lord jesus Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord.
and now my life to you I give now my life to you I give hallelujah hallelujah let my for delivering us. Our lives are completely turned around because of your power. Blessed be your holy name, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen. Bless your holy name, Father. Thank you.
in this place today, Lord. We say be magnified, be glorified. We're thinking that you live, you dwell in the praises of your people. And in your presence there is fullness of joy. Say, I am full of joy and I have the victory. I am full of joy and I have the victory. I'm full of joy and I have the victory because greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in this world. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the victory, for making us more than conquerors, for delivering us and redeeming us from the curse of the law and bringing us into your kingdom. To you be glory 
both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, you guys may be seated. Glory to God. The Lord is good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to continue to worship the Lord with our giving this morning as part of our worship. So if you need an envelope for your giving this morning, raise your hands. The ushers will see to it that you get one. And on behalf of myself, my wife, uh, my mom, pastoral staff, Frank and Jody, we want to say thank you for your generosity, for your gifts uh, in, in blessing us. It's a blessing. It's an honor to stand here before you. And, uh, and I say that in a spirit of humility, but we are forever grateful and thankful for what the Lord has called us to do and for giving us such awesome sheep to be an under shepherd to. Amen. We love you guys. We pray for you every day uh, that God's best be yours. And how many believe that's happening? I believe it's happening in your lives. Amen. Amen. Because obedience is the key, right? And, and you know, we're given this morning, and the Lord said to uh, prove me. Yeah, he, he actually told us, Try me out. Bring, the, to bring in all the first fruits of your increase. Bring it into my house. And, uh, and honor me with it. And see to it that, that I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour blessings into your life that you wouldn't have room enough to contain it. How many believe that? Amen. Storehouse blessing. He commands the blessing. Deuteronomy. He commands the blessing on our lives. Amen. And as we obey him, he rebukes the devourer for our sake. So we could say, Father, I thank you that the devourer is rebuked. We have surplus. We have extra. We have reserves. We have a full basket. Amen. We're, we have so much that we can be generous to everybody that we come in contact with to bring glory to God, right? To say, my father has blessed me like this, and I just want to give it and be a blessing to other people. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're believing for you guys. Uh, it happens by obeying God's word. Amen. Putting your faith on it, right? Believing God for it. Not believing with what you can see, because maybe what you can see, uh, it doesn't seem like much. But can you see the seeds that are in the ground that are, can, can you see, you know, you put the seed in, but you don't see what's happening underneath, but yet you're full of excitement because you're expecting a harvest, amen? And, and we put our faith on it together here, and I hope and believe that you guys are all saying the same thing in your devotions in the morning. $12,500 a week is coming into this place. So we have reserves, enough to last us as long as we need to. God is our source, right? And that we can pay and give and do everything that we need to do and, and expand, expand. Do you hear me? Expand. What do you mean, Pastor? Expand. Expand. There's a lot of people in our community that don't know the Lord. And if we believe they're coming in, we need to expand because they can't all fit in this building, right? So speaking that i'm believing that the lord has already shown me some things and i'm as he directs sharing it with you guys but the first is twelve thousand five hundred a week coming into this place amen and as you sow towards that your storehouse in your own life will be filled you will be well supplied amen how many believe that this morning how many are excited about that i wake up every day expecting i'm like today could be the day today could be it you know unexpected unusual extraordinary right uh, open hand of God the unusual supernatural extraordinary ways extraordinary ways and, and it's this is happening and there is an unstoppable momentum as God is is increasing speeding things up amen do you believe that stand up on your feet you guys look like you need to stand up are you excited about it? Are you thrilled about it? Glory to God. Do you want to see the whole community come to know the Lord? And yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. We do. And, uh, and, and the Lord is building a team here so that we can facilitate these things that are, that are coming to pass. And you guys have a part, a huge part to play in that. Amen. And, and God has kept us for such a time as this. Amen. And we're thrilled about it. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Glory to God. And there's going to be a transfer of wealth from the ungodly to the godly. To the godly. The ones who are going to do something for his kingdom. Amen. That's why. That's why it's coming to us. And we just can't help but be happy and be blessed and be expecting. Amen. 
Get your offering up. Wave it to the Lord. Thank Him that He provides seed for the sower. Father, we thank You for the opportunity to sow today. Lord, we thank You that You do provide seed for the sower. You cause increase to come into our lives. You daily load us with benefits. You cause us to inherit wealth. You're filling our accounts and our treasuries. This is Your spoken word. This is what You said to us. And Father, we believe because You said it. And so, Father, we thank you right now that you, I ask you, Father, to bless the obedience and the faith of those who are giving today as they sow to you to further the gospel, to further, to build your kingdom. We're not just building buildings. We're not building a name. We're promoting the kingdom of God in a glorious way because that's how you deserve it. And I thank you, Father, that you're rebuking the devourer for our sake. You're causing increase to come into our lives. We declare and we're excited about 12,500 coming into this place on a weekly basis, Lord. I'm excited that you're blessing the people in their storehouse, whatever they're believing you for, that it's coming to them in abundance, in abundance, Father. In abundance. We are excited about it. We thank you for it. We thank you that every bill is paid. Every debt is reduced. Mortgages paid off. Credit card payments paid off. Uh, car payments paid off. Free. Not slave to the lender. But we're givers. <laughs> people will bless people. We don't need to borrow from anyone because God is our Father. And I thank you, Lord, that you're increasing us. Spirit, soul, and body. To you be all the glory. To you be all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's, uh, there we go. We'll come right in on In the Times of Trouble. In the time of trouble, God will uphold him. God will preserve him. God will sustain him. In the time of trouble, God will lift him up. So rejoice, for his steps are ordered. God. Rejoice for the steps. Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered of God. They are ordered of God. Rejoice for the steps. Of a righteous man, they are ordered of God. In the time of trouble, in the time of trouble, God will uphold him. God will preserve He's preserving us. He's sustaining us. Hallelujah. In the time of trouble, God will lift him up. So rejoice, for your steps are ordered of God. Oh, rejoice, so rejoice, your steps are ordered of God. So rejoice, for your steps are ordered of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Father. Bless the name of the Lord. You can be seated if you can. <laughs> Glory. Woo. The Lord is good. Amen. Thank you, Father. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Do we have any first time guests with us this morning? Anybody here for the first time? All right, that means we got work to do, guys. All right. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Does anybody know people that don't go to church? All right. So, where are they? <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Well, it's an honor to stand here before you and uh, be excited about the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, really, we don't have too many announcements happening right now, although the men that are going to uh, Tulsa uh, on Thursday the 3rd, if you can, right after service, right up here, be less than five minutes. I just want to touch base with everybody, give you some updates of what's happening, and, uh, and then we'll go on from there. Amen. Keep us in prayer, too, and, and for those meetings out there that... Uh, that all the men that are going out there are going to hear from God. Amen. To come back and be who God wants them to be. You know, godly men. Do we need godly men? We do. Taking the lead. Taking the charge. Not giving in to the lust of the flesh and the desires of the flesh. But following God. Being a, a man after God's own heart. Amen. So uh, keep that in prayer. And uh, 
trying to think if there was anything else. I already said thank you. I was told that about 20 times. So um, I do remember all the women, of course. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good. Amen. Do you have your Bible this morning? If you do, open up to, I believe, the uh, this is what the Lord wants us to speak on this morning. Um, talking about this morning, um, believing God with your heart. Now, we've been talking about this in Faith and Healing School. And, uh, and just because you heard it once doesn't mean we don't need to hear it again, right? Um, the Lord said to me that because uh, sometimes, you know, when you're teaching three or four times, five times a week, something's about to overlap somewhere. You know, and I, and I go back and I'm looking. I'm like, wait, when did I say this? Did I say this on Wednesday night? Did I say that on Tuesday morning? I'm not sure when I said it. Did I say it last Sunday? And the Lord said, say it again, just like that. He said, because do you think that you've exhausted every nugget of truth out of that? I said, not even close. He said, so there's going to be more revelation, more understanding that comes from my word every time you read it, and, and which is why he said to me, approach it. Not with an attitude, well, I've heard that before, but an expectancy as if I've never heard this before. This is amazing, right? Because it is amazing. And if you expect to hear from God today, then you will hear him. Say, I expect to hear. I will hear him. I will hear him. Glory to God. So uh, let's pray. You guys turn in your Bible to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17. And then uh, and we'll pray. And we're going to trust the Lord for for revelation knowledge, impartations today of the Holy Ghost truth, right? So, Father, we thank you for this time together, Lord. We thank you that your word is a lamp to our feet. It is a light unto our path. Lord, it is your will. It is your intent. It is your good pleasure for your children. And everything that's in it belongs to us if we'll follow it the way you say to do it. We can have everything that you desire to bless your kids with. And so, Father, we say you be glorified in this. We ask you for revelation knowledge. Father, for impartations of truth, for understanding that we see clearly, Father. Holy Spirit, you're the teacher, you're the counselor, you're the helper, you're the quickener. Strengthen us, quicken us, counsel us today. Show us. We yield to you. We recognize your work and what you're supposed to do. And we say, have your way. Father, give us understanding. Make our ears clear to hear what the Spirit is saying today. And Father, may we not just be hearers, but may we be doers of the word. For it's the doer, the one who puts it into practice, that reaps the benefit of it. And most importantly, be glorified in it today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, glory to God. So we're going to look here in uh, Genesis, the beginning. Genesis chapter 17. And uh, I want to really, we've been talking about, I mean, the subject of faith and healing. Um, you know, you can't exhaust the subject of faith. Uh, the, more, the more you get into it, uh, the more you see how much you needed to learn, right? And how much more your faith can grow. And uh, there's one thing that, that too many Christians do. They're praying for more faith. And it's not scriptural to pray for more faith. In fact, God can't answer that. He's given us his own faith and a measure of it. We have a measure. We've been given a measure of God's faith. Um, so um, when Christians pray for more faith and nothing happens, that's because they need to use the faith that they have, right? They need to exercise. You can grow your faith by using your faith. And you see, the just live by faith. We should be growing our faith, putting our faith on something every moment of our lives. Speaking to our circumstances, speaking to our bodies, okay? This is how believers should talk. This is how the master did it. He spoke to fevers, didn't he? Peter's mother-in-law. He actually called out the fever and said, you have to go now. You can't stay here. Right? 
did that the same way we're supposed to do it. Right? Um, that's called exercising your faith. And the anointing is on God's word. And when the anointing comes upon us, things happen. But we feed our faith, and that's what causes our faith to grow. And uh, so, you know, wanting more faith would be like um, praying for more muscles. God, just give me more muscles. Because you might hear a voice, join the gym. <laughs> if you want more muscles, you don't need to pray for them. You need to exercise the ones I already gave you. Isn't that right? But well, we don't pray for more muscles. If we want them, we exercise. We understand that. And we should understand the same thing. God, just give me more faith. What we're really praying is, God, can you just do this for me? That's what we're saying. We're saying, God, this is hard. Can you just do it for me? And then you hear the voice, I already did it for you. Exercise your faith. Speak to the trespasser. Tell him he can't trespass. Tell your body, body, quit acting up. You got to line up with what was spoken. And then know what was spoken. Listen, that might sound strange to you, but it shouldn't anymore because we talk about that all the time. That's how we are to live our lives. When a headache comes, don't you say, oh, it's just a headache. I'll deal with it. No, you say, headache? You can't stay here. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law, and headache falls under that. So I'm not just going to, well, Pastor, you're very extreme. Yes, I am very extreme. And like I said, my, my, my family will tell you, if, if we're dealing with something and a symptom comes, I, well, I'm not, I don't want to hear how you feel. I believe you, but I believe this is going to help you, and you need to start saying that out of your mouth. And sometimes they get frustrated with me, but that's okay because I don't want to hear that. I don't want to talk about, the, I get it. I know what fevers feel like, but I don't want a fever, so I'm not going to sit and talk about it. I'm not going to magnify that. This is important for us to, because, we, well, Pastor, I mean, come on. It's just, we're not, we're just not what? We're just not speaking what God says about it. Correct? Correct. Oh, okay. I thought you wanted to share something. So, um, we need to speak what God's Word says. Concerning the situation. That's how our faith grows. So, uh, you guys are in Genesis chapter 17, correct? Let's read this. We're going to start at the top of the chapter. And if you've heard this already, because I can't remember where I shared it, um, we're going we're gonna to hear it again. Because faith comes how? By hearing. By hearing. And we, we certainly didn't exhaust this, even if we did talk about it on Thursday. There's so much more to it, and I believe in God to fill my mouth with more revelation today of his word. Amen? So, uh, so beginning in the 17th chapter, first verse of Genesis. Now, how many are the seed of Abraham in here? We are. We are. He is the father of faith, of our faith the way we know it, right? So I want to read this to us, and uh, you guys can follow along. I think this, this is the New King James today. I usually, I could read it from the CSB, but I got this open, so we'll read this. <clears throat> when Abraham was 99 years old, now there's a couple things I'm going to want you to underline here in, in that we're going to get to. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. Walk before me and be blameless. Verse 2, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. That's us. Verse 3, then Abram fell on his face and God talked with him, spoke with him. Underline that. Underline that word spoke or talked. And God talked with him, saying, as for me, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I have made you. Do you, do you hear what God is saying here? What do we know about Abraham at this point? 
Number one, he's 99 years old. He has no offspring to speak of. And even if he wanted kids, his wife wasn't able to have children, right? Now, isn't that amazing? That's how the Lord approaches. He comes to somebody who's not in childbearing years, who knows that his wife can't even have children, and says, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Faith. Do you think we serve a God of faith? That's He operates by faith. He loves faith. Faith to God is like oxygen to us. And faith for us, oxygen to our natural body, is what faith is to our spirits. We can't, can you live without oxygen? Can you just do it and breathe, you know, maybe five minutes a day and be okay? Can you just read your Bible on a Sunday morning and be okay? What will happen to your spirit if you're not feeding it, your faith? You become weak, and, and, and we become an easy target, an easy target. This book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth. Should, we need to be in it, meditating in it day and night, day and night. So, no longer is it going to be Abram. It's going to be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish, verse 7, my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations. That's us. We are descendants of his in our generation for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And then verse 9, And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. What I wanted us to see in that today, and as we, as we start and look at this, that faith to believe God comes from hearing God. The spoken word. The rhema word. Faith comes, what does Romans 10, 17 say? That's right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the anointed word of God. Turn to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Abraham, in this, the Lord appears to him. And Abraham believed God, and we're going to read through this here, and we're going to look at some other illustrations, but Romans chapter 4 says it like this. The Lord spoke with Abraham, right? And Abraham believed God. We're going to look at this, Romans 4. So used to using my, uh, yeah, my tablet. We're going to look at Romans chapter 4 and just start in the first verse here. I'm going to read through the scriptures here. God spoke to Abraham. Now, that's Old Testament, right? Now, here we are in Romans, and Paul is talking to the church in Rome, and he's using the same illustration that God, how God spoke to, he's teaching them about Abraham, like we're talking about it today, uh, years, years th later, later, talking about Abraham and his faith. And so this is what he says. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as a debt. Does everybody understand what that means? If you work for somebody, they're not giving you graciously. It's a debt that they owe you. You have a, an, an understanding. I'm going to work for you. You're paying me X amount of dollars. And this is what we're going to do. And uh, 
but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. In other words, our salvation is not something that we earned because we worked for it. Does everybody understand that? Our salvation that was wrought in the cross was a gift from God. It was graciousness being bestowed upon us. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. And then he quotes, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Now he's talking about works in the law with, with, with the church in Rome. In verse 9 he says this, does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only? Or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. Because afterwards, do you remember? So he didn't work for it. He didn't work for it. God came and spoke to him. In faith, and we're going to get to what we're going to build on here. Faith rose up in Abraham's heart because God spoke to him. Faith to believe what God said would come to pass rose up in Abraham's heart because of God's spoken word. Because of God's spoken word. Do we have God's spoken word on on? things that we're believing him for. If it's found in here and we need to know where it is, then yes, then yes. Too many people are putting their faith in what experts are saying because that's what they can see and feel and perceive and they're missing what God is saying. Miracles happen when you believe God and take him at his word. Trouble comes when we believe everything else. And that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He comes with thoughts. He's a distractor. He's a thief. And any time he comes snooping around and trying to trick us and get us, we need to stop him. We can't just let him, oh, well, it's just a headache. For now, it's just a headache. Until we start... Meditating on that, well, why is my head hurting? Hmm, well, I've had a headache for three days. What could this be? Let's do some more work and research. Let's figure it out. And all along, more thoughts, and you're hearing more doubt. And now you're, oh, man, so-and-so had one for three days, and then they ended up having that they didn't even know about. Headache, did you hear what I said? Should we allow that to just linger around? No, put a stop to it right away. Put your faith on it, and your faith will grow. If you don't have mountain-moving faith, have headache-moving faith for now. Start with a headache. Start with talking to your headache. If you have a headache, you say, headache, I resist you. You cannot stay here. I'm a child of God. And then you go on and you be healed. And then guess what? Next time there's something bigger, you'll go, hey, I remember I spoke to my headache. And that went. So this can go too. And then next time. And then you know what? You'll be moving mountains out of the way. According to what spoken, spoken. So so let's jump down here to verse 13 of Romans chapter 4. Again, we're talking about Abraham. And uh, Abraham didn't believe God based on what he can see. Abraham didn't believe God based on what he could feel. What did he believe God based on? What he heard. What was spoken. Now, we were talking about, and we may look at that a little bit today as, as well, in the book of Acts, chapter 14, uh, the Lord had put these things together, showing me uh, the importance of what is spoken and how important it is that we guard what we hear. It's so important. There's nothing little and insignificant when it comes to the things of God. And the enemy will take every opportunity 
that we give him, the things that seem insignificant, oh, it's really not a big deal. It is a big deal. Because whether you realize it or not, it's creating a stronghold in your mind. See, the enemy can't attack your spirit. But he'll come after your mind with lies, with thoughts, with suggestions, with these little things that really don't matter much, but they really matter. They really matter. So, uh, so verse 13 of Romans chapter 4, it says, For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. It was not, thank God it wasn't through the law. It wasn't like God said, um, you need to work for this. And if you, if you do this, this, and this, then this is what I'm going to do for you. God, God said, I'm calling you the father of many nations. And it has nothing to do with you. This is what I want from you. Serve me all the days of your life. So Abraham receiving that promise didn't come through the, the, the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Faith. What is faith? What is faith? Faith is the substance of things that we are confidently expecting. It's the evidence of things that we don't see yet. And Abraham called things that be not as though they were. How and why? How was he able to do that? Because God spoke to him. Friend, this, this ought to excite you. You can call something into being that isn't yet based on what God said about it. Not what your head's telling you. Not what experts are telling you but based on what God is saying. His word. Verse 14. For if those who are of the law... Now, I know when you read through this, sometimes it gets real wordy with the law, and, certain, and sometimes most people skip it because it just seems to... But there's a lot in this, and we're going to go through it, and we're gonna, the Holy Ghost is going to help us to understand it. For if, the, if those who are of the law are heirs... Faith is made void. Do you understand? It, it, there, there's no point in faith. It's not necessary. But we're not heirs according to the law. We're heirs according to believing what God said and receiving it by faith. By faith. Friend, how many are born again in here? The greatest miracle... Now, I know you may have heard, the greatest miracle that you will ever lay hold of has already happened in your life. And you didn't see it, you didn't feel it, maybe you felt something, but you believed it. And what did you believe it on? Based on what you heard. Based on what you heard. Your spirit has been completely recreated. Now is infused with the life of God. It, before that, it was not. We were of the devil who was our father at that point. But no more. We received salvation by faith, which is exactly what I'm talking about. But it seems as though the things that we can see and feel, we have a harder time wrapping our head around. And the reason that is, is because the enemy comes to our mind. In the area of finances, I'm calling myself well supplied. And I look at my account, and it's got $6 in it. Stop looking at that. Start calling yourself rich, well supplied. And Father, if you want me to give the six away, I'll give the six away. Because that's an act of faith. You're my source. I'm not just talking. I'm believing you. And I believe it because... I have where you said it. I open up the will. I look at it. And he said, this is what you do. I meet all of your needs. I make your cup overflow. Okay? But the enemy will come to you and your head will get in the way. And your head will start saying, oh, you can't do that. You can't afford that. Why is this this way? How come it's that way? You didn't expect that, Bill. You were better off three months ago. You keep giving, and it's getting worse. This is what your head says. Okay? But here's the good news. We don't believe God from our head. 
We believe God from our heart. You didn't get saved from your head. You got saved. You believed it in your heart. I'm going to show it to you. You confessed it with your mouth, and Jesus became your Lord. And then every day, you began to act like you're saved. And then what happened? A transformation began to happen. Faith works. Faith works. Faith keeps going, and transformation happens. You keep speaking over your body. You keep speaking over your finances. You keep speaking over your health, and only agree with what God has spoken. Disagree with everything else. You know, I'm not saying use wisdom. Thank God for doctors and their wisdom. But their wisdom does not supersede the spoken word of God. No way, no shape, no how. None whatsoever. They'll help you and you say, thank you for trying to help me. And I don't have peace about that, but I have peace about this. And this is what's coming to pass in my life. Friend... If it's not true, then none of us are saved. I can tell you that right now. You might as well wrinkle the whole thing up, and it's just been a big fraud. But that is not true. We know that it works. We know that it's true. And that's why the enemy, if it wasn't true, he wouldn't be hassling you. If it was something that's not true, why would he be bothering to get you to let go? The fact that he's on your case is proof positive that this works right that's exactly what it is it almost makes you laugh and it should because no weapon formed against me in finances health my family my relationships my job nothing no weapon formed against me can be successful i'll fight the good fight of faith and i'll lay hold to the promise because god has spoken it He spoke, he said it, and he's honored it ever since. Our part is to believe it by faith and and not be counterproductive. If we're believing God's word, then don't listen to doubt and unbelief because that's like trying to fill your bathtub up with the drain unplugged. You keep putting it in, and it keeps draining out. We have enough sense to stop it, right, to stop it. So... It's important what we're listening to. It is vital what we're allowing ourselves to look at. And the, the, the things that seem insignificant or, you know, not a big deal, those are the ones that are the big deal. The enemy's not going to come to you and say uh, something like, oh, the Bible's not true, and just stop believing it. Because what are you going to go, oh, okay. No. You're going to be like, no, the Bible is true. And, you, and he knows that. But what does he come with? It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Now they found this. Are you sure? Are you sure that you heard from God? Are you certain about this? He comes. He's a thief. I can grab him by his neck and choke the life out of him. And we do it with the word of God. Just clobber him with your Bible every time. He's a chump. He's a coward. He's a loser. He's a loser. So he comes with more symptoms. He comes with a bad report. He did it to Jairus while he was walking with Jesus. And that's in there to prove to us that it'll happen. And it could get even to the point of death. But if you will not fear and keep believing what I've spoken, it shall come to pass in your life. Death can't even stop what God has said. Friend, do you understand that? Why is this exciting? Because this means that we could walk and not, and, 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 and not fear. We could be in health. We could prosper spirit, soul, and body. Oh, yeah, we'll fight some battles. But if God is for us, who can be against us? By faith, by faith we lay hold. And we have a whole lot of uh, heroes of faith that did it who came before us. And God is moving the same way today in an accelerated fashion. Unstoppable momentum. We're going to see things that we've never seen before. 
Are you? I'm, every day, I'm like, today could be that day. I get excited about it. I get up in the morning, I'm like, what's extraordinary going to happen today? Right? I tell my wife, hon, what are we expecting today? And I get excited about it because it's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Everything that the Lord has said shall come to pass. Shall come to pass. But let's keep looking at this and how this all happens. So, uh, for if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about, this verse 15, brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Right? If there's no law that says this is wrong, then if we do it, we don't know we're doing wrong. Because there's nothing that says it's wrong. Does everybody understand what I mean? Okay? Verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith. This promise to Abraham he's talking about. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. God's help. His unmerited favor. Grace stands for God's riches at Christ's expense. For us, unmerited favor. Uh, it, it is according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed... Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. God did it that way so that we didn't have to worry about keeping the law. He made it available for everybody, and he turned what once was works and law into a gift. And he gifted it to us. Not based on us and how good we are. And whether some are good, I mean, you hear, you talk to people about, oh, well, you know, that person, they, they were such good people, you know, and I, I mean, I'm a good, I give to the church, and that's good, and we should, but it's not how we get to heaven. We have to receive the gift of grace and then repent. This is what, this is, so we're going to get to a point here, we're not going to finish it today, I promise you. So, um, uh, <laughs> verse 17, as it is written. I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Now, verse 18. Verse 18. Now, we're talking about Abraham. Remember, back in Genesis chapter 17, the Lord spoke to Abraham, told him all this, these things, said, I'm making a covenant with you, called him the father of many nations before he had kids. Is God nuts by doing that? Because people might say, well, we're nuts. You're calling something that be not as though they are. And you say, well, I'm just acting like my dad. That's what he did. God did it, didn't he? he did he not say, Abraham, I am making you. I have made you a father of many nations. Faith, faith, faith. He created what we see out of nothing with his, wor with his words, with his words. So, verse 18, who contrary to hope, talking about Abraham, in hope believed. I, I have to read this to you from the CSB. Um, I'm sorry. I have, to, I have to do it this way because... I like the way it reads it in here better. So, um, where are we at? Romans chapter 4. Give me one minute. We'll get right to this. <clears throat> All right, verse 16. I'm just going to do it here. This is why the promise is by faith. So that, it, so that it may be according to grace to guarantee it to all the descendants, not only to the one who is of the law, but also to the one who is of Abraham's faith. That's us. He is the father of us all. As it is written, verse 17, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, the one who gives life to the dead and calls things into existence that do not exist. Abraham, he believed Hoping against hope. What, what is it? Why is it saying that? Expecting, confidently expecting something that seemed hopeless. Okay? He was confidently expecting something that seemed impossible. Well, what do we know about that? Are just a few things possible to those who believe? 
just headaches going away or possible, but anything bigger, you know, the big diseases, not as much, not so much. All things are possible to those who believe. Jesus demonstrated that for us, anointed by God with the story of Jairus. Bad report along the way while he was believing God. He was with Jesus. And the enemy still came, trying to get this man to give up and say, this doesn't work. I mean, I'm with him. It's, she's dead. There's no hope now. They even said that to him. Don't bother him anymore. Your daughter, unfortunately, already passed. And Jesus looked at him and said, Jairus, keep on believing, buddy. Do not fear. Do not fear what? Do not fear the report. Do not yield to doubt based on the report. You may have heard a bad report. Who cares? Read the good report. Arm yourself with the real report. The report that always comes to pass. That himself bore my sickness and disease. He carried it to the cross, took it from me. He redeemed me from the curse of the law. It's impossible for me to have this or continue to have this because he took it. That is the report that I'm believing. Yeah, yeah, but did you hear what the doctor said? They're not God. They're not God, and they don't know everything. They're doing their best to help us, but they're going to be a believer too if you hold fast to your confession of faith. And they're going to say, wow, we're smart, but man, God is much smarter. Much smarter. He believed, hoping against hope. So that he became the father of many nations. When did he become the father of many nations? When God spoke it to him. When God spoke it to him. He believed. According to what had been spoken. What did he believe? How did he believe? According to what God said. Do you know what God said about health and healing? And about your finances. And about him being the good shepherd. Do you know? Because if you don't know, you have to find out. Because your believing is based on knowing what he said. Not knowing what your most spiritual friend knows. Not knowing what the pastor preaches. Knowing for yourself what God said about what belongs to you. Now your head will fight you to the end. But you just tell your head... Listen, I agree with you, head. It doesn't make sense. But here's the good news. I'm not believing it from my head. I'm believing it from my heart. From my heart. And when you say that to the enemy, he's like, wait, what? You, you agree that you don't understand it? Yeah. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to. And he's like, wait, wait, hang on a second. Wait, what? You, what do you mean? You, you, wait. He's like, wait, wait, what do you mean? What do you mean you don't understand it? No, I don't. I don't have to. But I know what he promised me, and that's what I believe in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. Say, I believe in my heart. Not what, based on what I can see. Not based on what I can feel. Not based on the most current report that I just received. Not based on a lump that just popped up out of nowhere. Because that happens, right? It happens, and what do we do? Do we fall apart and go, oh my gosh, another lump? I thought I was believing God. You're right. You thought you were. <laughs> You're exactly right. You thought you were. Start doing it. Don't look at the lump and go, well, I guess the Bible's not working. That's head faith, guys. That's based on what you can feel and see. This is diametrically opposed how we've been programmed. But the just shall live this way. And if you want to walk and live your time out here on earth and go when you're ready to go, this is how you're going to have to live. Anybody who goes before this, they've been cheated by the enemy. They didn't have to. Don't ever say, well, God, it was his will and he wanted to take them. We don't know everything. But one thing we do know, God doesn't take people. He's a giver. He's a giver. And he wants us. He's promised us long, healthy, satisfied life. And your results are not dependent on other people's. I don't care what we thought about the other person. Your results are not based on that. 
If God's word says it, if I'm the last man standing, I'll go out confessing his word. Because his word works. Always works. Always works. This is so exciting to me. Because there's nothing that could separate us from the power operating of God in our lives. Nothing. If we'll believe what's spoken, we will have what he said. Is it a fight? Yes, the Bible calls it the fight of faith. Does it get difficult at times? Yes, it absolutely does. Does it get uncomfortable? Sure it does. Do you think it was uncomfortable getting thrown into a fiery furnace? Yeah, yeah. Do you think it was uncomfortable for Paul and Silas being... Uh, chained to a wall and beaten beyond what we could ever imagine? Do you think that their flesh wanted to worship God? I'm telling you, their head must have said, Paul, you are a nut. You should have stayed where you were, and none of this stuff would be happening to you. Has anyone ever heard that? That's called head faith. And if you start to believe that way, you're going to do without but faith, heart faith goes, I'm, I know that if God is for me, nothing can be against me. And this might be happening right now, and it might be the midnight hour of my life, but joy and the sun always shines. And this darkness will not last forever. And the God who quickens me will keep me, sustain me, and cause me to overcome no matter how hard it gets. And it may get hard. I'm not, I'm not, believe me, I'm not saying that at all. But that's all the more reason you have to keep the report of the Lord before your eyes. Because it's the strong spirit of an individual that will sustain them in sickness and in problems and in conflict. Strong spirit. Not a weak spirit, a strong spirit. You know how important it is to be built up and strengthened so that if it's not when, it's not if rather, it's when. We have an enemy, right? But just because he comes and attacks, just because he comes and says, I want to break into your house and rob everything, do we just go, you really do? And he's like, yeah, I want to kill, steal, and destroy you. Okay, have at it. I didn't really like that one over there anyway. Take that one first. No, no. What do we do? We're like, you can't come in here. You can't come in here. You resist. You fight the fight of faith. You have to. You have to. Yeah, but God, why do we have to? Because that's how he said it's getting done. That's why. That's why. Who cares? As long as we get what we want. (laughs) Right? As long as we get what he promised, I'll fight. Be a fighter. You have to be a fighter. If you're not a fighter, start training. Start training now because you have to be a fighter in, the, in, in God's uh, army. You can't just be, oh, no, I'll, I'll just, you know, no, I'm going to stay over here. I'll cut the grass, and it's dangerous out there. No, no. Be a fighter. Stand up and fight. Stand up and fight. Refuse the lies of the enemy. When he lies and tries to trespass, it ought to irritate you. It irritates me. It ought to make you uh, uh, righteous anger come out and say, you are not robbing from me. You are not. You, You will stop right now. And you put your Bible on the floor on top of his head and you stand on the rock. And you say, I will not be shaken by any of this. I don't care what whirlwind you try to bring at me. Brother Keith said it here. And Brother Keith was a fighter. He grew up as a fighter. Before the Lord called him into ministry, he was going to move to uh, uh, Japan or something studying martial arts. So he was a, I know him, he was a fighter, a real fighter. And when he got into the, and I was too, I come from you. My dad, he, my dad was not as much of a, you were a fighter. I know you are. And I was too. But now I fight for the Lord, thank God. But, uh-uh, if you're coming at me, I can whip you, man. <laughs> I will whip you. If it's, Brother Keith said, it fits in the ring with me, I can whip it. Because greater is he that is in me 
than he that is in the world. I'm not doing it on my own might and strength, but the stronger I am in him, the easier the job is. And I may be bleeding, and I, my lip might be busted open, and I may be cut here, and I have to yell, cut me, Mick. Remember that? Right? Right? With Rocky, and I may be against the rope, and then all of a sudden, dun, 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 and the arms come up, and all of a sudden he comes out, and he starts swinging, bleeding, busted up, not feeling like it, but overcoming. But overcoming. Every time. Every single time, every single time, there's not one time that that won't happen for you if you'll lay hold of the promise of God. I don't care what it is, whether it's a hangnail or it's cancer, makes no difference. The answer to your problem is the same. It is the same. It is believing, believing the spoken word of God. What you heard is what you believe. And you may hear other things. But if they're contrary to what he said, you have to dismiss it. Keep your head down. Just keep eating. Keep feeding in the good green grass that God gave you. And when he starts talking, your head will pop up because you'll recognize his voice. And that's the only thing that moves us. Glory to God. So he believed hoping against hope. And uh, so that he would become the father of many nations according to... To what had been spoken. And he said, so your descendants, so will your descendants be. That's us. Verse 19. Now this is what's important here. He did not weaken in faith. Did you hear this? What happened to Jairus when they were on the road? He believed God. He heard something first. Now I know I always go back to this, but there's new revelation we get every time we talk about it. He approached Jesus because of what he heard. So he had faith. Faith came up, otherwise he wouldn't have approached Jesus. If he didn't have faith to believe that something would change and his daughter would be restored, he would have never approached Jesus. The reason he had faith to approach him is because he heard something. He heard what God was doing through Jesus. And, and the minute you hear about what God is doing, faith Come on, faith will rise up on the inside of you. Right now, people's faith is rising up to step out and to believe God because you're hearing the word. You're hear the anointing is on his word. That's why this is different than any other kind of novel that's ever been written. This isn't a novel. This is a living testament. So his faith, he approached Jesus. And Jesus said, let's go. And we know the story, what happened, the woman with the issue of blood, who got what she got because she heard something too and believed. And she said, I'm going to get healed today too. Today is a healing day. Glory to God. Every day, every day. And on the way, what happens? An evil report. The most evil. The most evil. This man was full of faith. And at that moment when he heard... Don't bother her anymore. Your daughter already died. He had an opportunity right then and there to weaken in his faith. And now let me say something to you. That is where the rubber meets the road. But Jesus, and Jesus lives on the end. Now, he's not walking next to me. He walks inside of me. That's closer than walking alongside of me. Right? And Jesus is saying the same thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do not fear. Do, and that's what he looked at Jairus and said, oh, boy, this is a, this is, that's a bad report is what I'm sure he didn't say anything. But he said, look, at, look, 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 I believe my father. You do not fear. Keep on believing. Keep on believing. Now, Jesus did not perform this because he was the son of God. This is so important to know. He didn't have an extra edge and did what he did because he was the son of God. In fact, if you'll read through, there was no miracles ever recorded of Jesus until he was anointed by his father. And it was then that his earthly ministry started at 30 years old. So if, if, if it was uh, because he was just the son of God, why wasn't he doing it as a child? Why wasn't he doing it in his teens, in the 20s? He wasn't. He wasn't anointed. It wasn't his time. He said, my time has not come yet. 
And, and then when he was anointed, guess who else is anointed? We are. We are. We're anointed. The Holy Ghost has come upon us, in us, and the anointing is on us to do these same things that he's talking about. So the evil report came and tried to weaken Jairus in his faith, just like the enemy does to us today. Just, just, just you know, you're, you're hoping things are going along, and then all of a sudden, mm, mm. And what do we do in the mm, That's what determines our outcome. And just like the master said to him, he's saying it to us. Listen, don't yield to the hmm. Don't look at that. Don't fear. Don't let doubt creep in now. I know it seems impossible, but remember, all things are possible if you'll just keep believing. So he said, keep on believing. Believing what? Believing what you heard. Believing what made you come to me in the first place. And by faith, they went. And by faith, she was restored to life again. Glory to God. It's exactly right. So, you know, we, we, we've been, so uh, he did not weaken Abraham. He did not weaken in faith. Some people weaken in their faith. He didn't weaken in his faith when he considered his own body to be already dead. In other words, because he was 100 years old, he's past the childbearing years. Okay? Uh, and also, the deadness of his wife's womb. She couldn't even have children. He did not weaken in faith when he considers. Well, what does that mean? When the enemy brings those thoughts to his head. Because he did. You, you cannot tell me the minute that the Lord spoke, to, God spoke to him, the enemy came and said, dude, you're 100 years old. And your wife can't have kids. Maybe you're senile, you're confused. All these kind of things. But the Bible says he did not weaken in faith when he considered. So what must he have done? He must have said, shut up, head. God said it, and I believe it. That's what he did. He must have. He said he did not, he did not weaken. Verse 20, he did not waver in unbelief at God's promise. He didn't start to doubt it, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Now, friend, that's all well and good. Thank God for Father Abraham. But for 25 years, he did that. <laughs> we forget that part. It wasn't like, nope, Lord, I'm believing you. Let's have it. And then the next day, boom, Isaac was there, and everybody was happy. 25 years, he had to tell his head to shut up. Not grow weak in his faith, but head, quit acting up. God made a promise. That is a long time. That is a long time. He was walking it out. He was hearing from God. He stirred himself up. And it's in his mind, it was done already. It was done already. He did not waver at God's promise, but was strengthened in his faith. How do you strengthen your faith? You keep using it. You keep using it. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, if God promised me that, then every day I'm going to put my faith on it. I'm going to keep saying, I call myself rich. I call myself well supplied. I call myself healthy as the strongest athlete on the planet. That's exercising your faith. Not based on what you can see. You might not be able to move your toe. But you declare, I could run 100 miles if I had to. Because the greater one lives on the inside of me. And then don't go try it unless you heard from God. But... <laughs> Use wisdom. Verse 21, he was strengthened in his faith because, verse 21, he was fully convinced. Underline that in your Bible. Full, are you fully convinced of the promise of God today? Friend, we don't have time to, wave, to, 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 to go uh, back and forth on that anymore. The line needs to be drawn in the sand. I'm standing on the fully convinced side. And therefore, I will have what he promised me. And I'm willing to fight the fight of faith till the Lord comes back. There's never a point where we stop fighting the fight of faith. I mean, we get to heaven, and we're just believing the Lord for other things, even greater things, right? He was fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to do and to perform. Do you believe that today? 
I believe the power of God is working in our bodies right now. I believe he's straightening things out, reversing things in our lives, in our finances, in our health. I believe that right now. Why I believe it? Because he said it. Because he said it. And it is forever settled. And then it said, verse 22, Therefore it was credited to him for righteousness. Now it was credited, now it was credited to him was not written for Abraham alone, but also for us. It will be credited to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. So head faith, now we just started, this was our introduction today, so um, we'll, uh, and oh, man, man, time just, <laughs> uh, do I even, <sighs> no, it'd be too much to start into, mm-hmm. yeah, I think we'll end it right there for today, and, uh, and, and there's a lot to chew on right there, <laughs> right? But we're going to come back and listen and, and hear the rest of it and what some things that, um, and, and look at some instances about how important it is what we're hearing and how faith comes when you hear the right thing. But I have to tell you this too, fear will come if you hear the wrong thing. Just as quick as faith comes, fear will come just as quick if you hear the wrong thing. So safeguard what you hear. If you're believing God for healing in your body, stop looking at bad reports. Not denying them. I just don't want to focus on those. I want to focus on the good report. The one that says, I'm restored and made whole. That's the one I want to look at. If that's what you want. If that's what you want, right? Well, because everyone will say, oh, well, of course that's what I want. But, and then there's the butt. And it's the butt that always gets you kicked in the butt every time. No buts. This is what he said. I don't want to hear about anything else. Not interested. Not interested. And you keep your head in the word of God. Amen. But we are going to look in. I, want, I do want to look in Acts. And I want to look at Mark eleven twenty three, 23. And I want to look at some of these things. And uh, Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. How important it is. Because what we're talking about is believing with the heart. And not with the head. But I wanted to lay this foundation with Abraham. Who believed God. And stood for 25 years before it came to pass. And he didn't stop believing God after that. Because then God challenged him again. With the promise. With Isaac. And, and he had to stay in faith with that. Believing what God said. Right? That I'm going to make you a father of many nations. The seed's going to come through your son. Who I'm blessing you with. So again, we'll, we'll come back and look at that. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll not finish up. Because there's a lot more to do. But... Praise God. Amen. Stand up on your feet. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for your word. Your word is life. Father, I believe you right now. That healing power is flowing. Your anointing is here, and it's the anointing that that destroys the yokes, removes burdens in our life. Burden of sickness, burden of lack, bondage. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. The law of the spirit of life in Christ has set me free from the law of sin and death that was against me. And according to Deuteronomy, I was cursed by the law. But Galatians 3.13 says, Christ became a curse for me, for cursed is every person that hangs on a tree. And he was hung on a tree for me, and he redeemed me with his own life from the curse. So therefore, I declare that I am healed, I am whole, I am healthy and prosperous, I'm getting stronger and brighter every single day. For the word of the Lord is spoken, and it's working in my life. And I believe it. I put my faith on it. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands towards heaven. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your anointed word. Father, we thank you for your help. We thank you for your grace. We thank you that you give your help to the humble. Father, we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We're just thankful that you loved us so much to save us. And then now you made us your children, and you want to do nothing but good for us. Heal us. You made provision. Provision. And we're thankful for it. Lord, I thank you that you're healing people today, right now. Those who are even online watching. 
your healing power flow. Reach out and just take it from him now. I believe that the anointing is destroying sickness and disease. It's destroying lack. I'm not just saying that. I believe that's happening because that's what the word says. He sent his word and healed them. His word has been sent forth today and declared. And we receive it by faith. Right now, when we pray, we believe we receive it. And therefore, we believe we have it. So now thank him that you're restored. Thank him that healing power is flowing in you. Thank him that your body is recovering, being strengthened, being quickened. Everything's being reversed. Every vessel's being changed. Your, your, your organs are being healed. Every, your ligaments, your muscles, every organ. Your blood is being completely changed and strengthened because of the anointing. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing in this place. Thank you for the healing power that's working in the lives of all those who reach out with faith and take it. And take it today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And thank you for manifesting your presence here. The gifts of the Spirit in operation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're in this room today or you're watching us online and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, friend, that's the first thing. you got to come into the family of God to get in on the good benefits that He's bestowed upon all His kids. He's died for you. He sent His Son to redeem you. So if you're in this room and you've never received Jesus Christ into your heart, you've never asked Him to come in, forgive you, and be your Lord and your Savior, then let me know. Raise your hand. I want to see who you are because today we want to make sure that you can get in on all this good stuff that's happening. And those that are watching us online, maybe this first time you've heard something like this, if that is you, we have staff that are watching. Comment on our feed. We want to reach out to you. We want to get materials to your, into your hands. We want to pray with you. We want to get you hooked up if you're in this area, in, a, in this church. If you're somewhere else, we'll get you, find you a good church there. But please let us know. If you're born again, then raise both hands towards heaven. And thank God that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And every good and perfect gift that God has bestowed on us is coming upon me. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We say you be glorified. Thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you for ministering to us, Lord. We thank you that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish what it's sent forth to do. It will not just be hearers, Father, but we'll be diligent doers who put in the painstaking effort to walk in the blessing of God. For your grace is sufficient. And when we are weak, you are strong. Yes, thank you. We declare that we are self-sufficient in your sufficiency. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We appreciate all that you've done. Yes, Lord. And we'll follow hard after you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Uh, the guys that are going away to Tulsa, just five minutes. Come up here real quick. And we'll, we'll be uh, probably less than five minutes. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your week. Okay, <laughs> we can do that. We can do that. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can you uh, straighten this strap out and get it all hung up? All right. Praise God. All right. We ready in season and out. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Rejoice for the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. Amen. Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered of God. They are ordered of God. Rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered of God. In the time, in this time of In the time of trouble, God will uphold him. God will preserve him. God will sustain him. In the time of trouble, God will lift him up. So rejoice for your steps.